What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phase 6. It's another episode of Ask Sir Love. And it's your boy, Sir Love, getting ready to answer a couple more questions for you guys. So, um, let's jump into a few. I was looking at uh, a question from Kali or Callie Duncan. Callie Duncan hit me with uh, this question right here, which I thought was pretty interesting, right? We're going to jump into it. He says, can you answer me a question? And if for some reason, that sounds cool to me. Instead of, can you, can you answer this question? Can you answer me a question? I don't know. It has some swag to it. it sounds kind of Caribbean. Um, what qualifies as a hit record these days? Is it a certain level of streams or TikTok features? Is it actual record sales? Uh, because that because that would seem like hustle... That would seem like hustle, hustle backwards to get, or it would seem like hustling backwards to get a production deal when you've already facilitated a situation that's already selling records. What metric do you think a production company looks for when searching for performance uh, artists uh, and not producers or songwriters? He's specifically talking about the artists. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's using the term performance artist to allude to, uh, to, allude to the name from a, a copyright uh, publishing perspective. Uh, I'm only asking this question because we've seen a lot of production companies sign performance artists early in their career. Example, Megan Thee Stallion, uh, as a lot of production companies are masquerading as labels these days, having to market slash shop uh, the artists they produce themselves. It's a lot here. This is going to be a great video. There's a lot here. I think it's going to be a great video. We'll see. So let's talk about it. For everyone, anyone that's never seen this before, uh, this channel before, if you want to get your question answer just pop it in the comment and like share subscribe and tell your friends about me let's jump into it what qualifies as a hit record let's break it down so a hit record is a record that uh pretty much meets all the standards identified by billboard billboard has been addressing and, and identifying and defining hit records for a very long time billboard historically defined a hit record as a record that had high sales and that also had high plays on radio However, over time, these things have changed. Uh, nowadays, Billboard, um, and, and give an example, I have Billboard here, right? Here's Billboard, the Hot 100 record list, right? So these are, you know, the hit records of, of today while I'm, while I'm talking about this, right? The Hot 100 list. And, you know, from a Billboard perspective, they now, I think since 2013, also included uh, streams, right? Because radio has become Pandora, iHeart as well, which is streaming and sales has become uh, Spotify uh, as well as uh, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, all those other people, right? And that also comes from streaming. So streaming is now also added. Even YouTube uh, is considered uh, in the streaming category and all these things contribute to whether or not you have a hit record and billboard is monitoring all these stats I am not sure how these things are weighted right our album the traditional album sales worth more than a stream right we all know that RIAA has a uh, calculated what a single sale is worth in streaming and what an album sale is worth, a traditional album sale is worth in streaming and all these different things. And so they have, uh, of course, Billboard has their own methodology for weighting what's more important, radio plays versus streams versus playlisting versus this. And I don't think playlisting is a part of it, but you kind of get the point, right? So Billboard identifies uh, a hit record or has created a methodology that many people in the industry accept as a hit record, right? So by this type of definition, you can have crazy streams, right? Crazy, 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 crazy streams and zero radio play and likely still uh, have a hit record. You could have crazy radio play with lower streams uh, and potentially still have a hit record. Uh, it depends on the mix and how things are weighted and how they're calculating as well as how you're calculating it. Now, if you're in the streets marketing your record, you have a DJ play a record and go, yo, this is a hit. This is a smash. This record is crazy, right? And all that type of energy. And it's because they are trying to predict uh, the likelihood that the record will be a hit. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a hit record is a record that a large amount of people like and want to play over and over and over again for one reason or, or, or another. It, it makes them dance, it makes them laugh, it makes them cry, it, it has shock value, it relates to them interpersonally or spiritually or whatever. You know, the record has an impact on an audience in such a way that they want to replay the record or rehear the record over and over and over again. And we're measuring that through people that assess or deliver records that get played over and over and over and over again. All right, so that's what a hit record is. All right. It's a record that people want to play over and over and over again. That's the most simplistic definition of way to look at it. Now, calculate. I gave you different ways to calculate it. That's answer number one. Moving down the stream of questions here. Right. Um, 
it would seem like uh, it'd be backwards to get a production deal if you've already facilitated a situation that's already selling records. That couldn't make a lot of sense. If you already have a hit record or a record that's buzzing, which means the record is showing promise to be a hit, but you haven't had the ability to scale it or invest the proper money into it to get more people to hear it, right? It has that hit effect, right? You've given, like, there's an audience in a particular state or a particular county or region where everyone is requesting this record over and over and over again, but you haven't had the resources or the machine to take that record that everyone wants to hear over and over and over again and play it in other regions where everyone, where other people can have that same experience or see that same effect. That's typically a buzzing record, right? The record has buzz, all right? When a record has buzz, but it has the ability to, to move on its own, meaning it's in a particular area, Everyone loves the record. They want to hear the record over and over and over again. But not only do they want to hear it over and over and over again, they're telling other people about it and they're sharing the record and they're informing other people that the record exists. And so the record is slowly starting to expand from one region on its own to other regions. That's when the record has legs on it, right? That record, the record has legs, has a buzz, and it's moving, right, on its own. We need to really gaslight this record because... The, the appeal of a record is only going to last a certain amount of time, right? A record's going to go up, and then it's going to go down, and then we normally do things to keep it up. Like, once it's up, right before it goes down, we drop a video, and then we drop a remix, oh, we drop a remix, and then we drop a video, then a video to the remix, and then whatever we can do to keep the record alive as long as possible before we can drop the next record, all right? So if you have a record that's already got legs, it's already buzzing, it's already moving, uh, it, it depends on where you are for a production company. Remember, this whole video that I'm doing right now is based off of how to get a production deal. A production deal is, is basically a group of people that are signing you to help make you the records. They're trying to help get you the hit record. They're trying to help produce the album, right? You don't have the resources to do that on your own, the talent, the staff, the team, whatever it is to produce the quality of music that you want to produce on your own to get a production company. If you already have a hit record, you probably don't need a production company because you already have the means of creating hit records on your own. So yes, it would be hustling backwards to go sign uh, to a production company if you already have the ability to do your own production, all right? Next part of the question, what metric do you think a production company looks for when searching for uh, the artist? Not the producers, not the songwriters, but the artist, right? I think what a production company is looking for is a person that can take their type of production and, and expand it, take it to the next level. That's going to be different for everyone. If you're a production company that does a specific genre, you're going to be looking for a specific genre of artist, right? Because that you need an artist that complements the type of production that you do as a production company, right? Uh, when Babyface and L.A. Reid had their uh, had their production company before they went full fledged LaFace Records, right? They were looking for R and B artists. That's what they do. They do R and B, right? And they 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 do you know that type of vocal. Uh, they have a certain type of vocal production. They do ballads. They wanted soulful singers. They had a certain concept that they were looking for, right? Outcast and everything they did with Goody Mob and all that was an outlier, even when they started their record label. So. It starts with the genre. Production company is going to have a genre preference. Uh, then they're going to have an artist preference within the genre. Uh, it could just be because of their personal, who, who they are. You know, maybe it's uh, the production company is ran by women and they want to have an all women crew. So they want a female vocalist, right? Maybe it's, it, it's, it's men and they prefer, you know, a street audience. So they want a more street crew. Uh, maybe that, you know, it's, there's a lot of what works for me. The production company is very much so choosing an artist based off of who fits me. If I did a marriage, right, because it's a marriage, it's a marriage between my music and your vocal ability and your writing ability or whatever it is, I, I need to make sure there's a fit. So if a production company is not uh, looking for a particular mold, they're looking for the right fit that's going to be able to put their music or their production in the proper light. All right. So when you're looking at signing to a production company as an artist, you should be considering, do I fit this scene? It, do I Fit what they're doing, not just the, like, do I fit musically, do I fit culturally, do I do I fit right? Um, whereas a record label is looking at how can I take something that's buzzing or something that has legs and how can I expand it. it, it the record label doesn't typically give a fuck if you fit or not. They want to fit. They want to know. Well, they don't. They don't care about your um, if you fit on a talent interpersonal uh, you know delivery level. They care. Do you fit from a uh, a level of, uh, does can my team facilitate the type of music that you make, right? If you're a pop artist, do we have reach in the pop space where we can expand this record? If you're a rock artist, they're looking at it, again, it would have fit from a, uh, a delivery to the market perspective, 
Whereas a production company is looking for a delivery of music excellence perspective, right? Can I make the best music possible with this talent? So it's two completely different vantage points and labels are typically more diverse in their ability to work with multiple genres and multiple different groups than a production company is. Production companies typically have a wheelhouse that they're excellent in. And they typically stay in that space. All right. So what are they looking for? They're looking for someone that's a fit. Uh, also, in addition to someone that's a fit, they also want to make sure typically that this person has a good team behind them, that this person has some type of finances behind them. That way they don't have to do all the investing themselves. They're a production company. They're not your manager. They're not your label, right? A production company may do visuals. They may do videos and photos. They may expand outside of the music range, but they're not looking to cover all the range of expenses that are needed to take an artist from point A to point G, right? They're looking for that artist to have some type of supplemental resources, their own attorney their own uh, their own management team, their own resources to help them scale, or the production company prefers an artist to strip down so they can have more control and then they just want to shop. So all of these things depend on the production company's strategy as well. So there's a, a talent uh, genre, you know, cultural fit, and then there's also a, you know, a strategic fit, right? For some production companies, they want you to have all the resources and they want to focus on the music and that is it. A lot of the top tier production companies work that way. Then you have other production companies that are typically lower tier that say, hey, I want to bring you in from scratch. I want to build you up and I want to shop you. Those are typically smaller or mid-sized production companies that have that philosophy in view. Um, typically. Now, there's outliers on both sides, but that's typically the, the, the view there. So I hope that's giving you clarity uh, this on, on the diverse questions that you're asking here, okay? And then he says, I'm only asking this question because we've seen a lot of production companies sign uh, performance artists early in their career, Megan Thee Stallion, and a lot of production companies are masquerading as labels these days uh, and having to market slash shop artists they produce themselves. And yeah, I just mentioned that, right? It depends on the strategy. Uh, the term masquerading, I think, is misleading. It kind of creates this idea that the uh, production company is under-delivering or under-serving their value or somehow being fake or lying. Uh, I think the conflict here is that many artists have unrealistic expectations of what any entity in the, in the spectrum is supposed to do, right? A record label takes your record from one place and expands it. The time... For the times of a record label saying, hey, we're going to take you from nothing, sign you and make you a superstar over overnight. It, it's, it doesn't work that way anymore, largely because the record label is no longer the gatekeeper. Right. Independent market said, hey, no gatekeepers. Right. We have spot. We have our own streaming. We have the Internet. We have all these things. And so now the record label does not have the power of taking you from zero to hero. The record label can't do it. They don't have the resources. They're not structured in such a way to do so. So the idea that you know, there's any one company that's going to take you from zero to hero is, is, is a misleading idea, right? Uh, so if you're thinking of a record label as someone that's going to do that for you, then you have a misconception of what the record label does. And from a part from a which influences the production company view, right? Because if your production company view is, oh, you're pretending to be a label because you're only doing the first part, but you're not doing everything else. So you're masquerading as a label. That's th that disconnect comes from that first net wrong or, or, or misaligned idea. A production company is saying, hey, I'm going to get you from A to maybe E, right? I'm going to get your music to where it needs to be so that maybe somebody is interested in working your project. I'm not your manager. I'm not out here trying to get you shows. I'm not out here, you know, trying to find booking agents for you. I'm not out here. Like, it's not my job to make your career sex successful. It's my job to make your music amazing, Right. Now, a production company, in interest of winning, many of them will do other uh, other activities or, or take on other roles to help. So a production company may go into video. They may go into photo. They may go into booking. They may go into other spaces with the intent of trying to ensure that their investment actually pans out because the production company takes the risk of spending all their time, all their resources, and some of their money in investing in your music. And if no one ever hears the music, they take a loss. So in order to prevent that loss from occurring, the production company may take on other uh, tasks, right? That may, be, that may seem record label-esque, but they are not the record label and it is not their responsibility to go from zero to hero, all right? 
So the whole masquerading as a label thing, uh, I, I would I would refute that a little bit. The person that wants to become a production company becomes a production company because they really love music. They have a passion for the art. They have a passion for the creativity. That's typically where their talent is. Uh, but they really want the world to hear their talent. They're producers. They're songwriters. They're engineers. They're people that love creating, and they want the world to hear their creation. Right. That's. That's the essence of a production company. And when they get with a great artist, they find an artist that can make their creations, you know, come to life. And, and that's the beauty of the relationship there. So um, a lot of different pieces here, a lot of disjointed questions. So how does all this come together? Uh, to me, listening to this whole thing, it sounds like, uh, Callie, either you're in a situation where um, you may have had a bad experience or you're seeing other people that are having bad experiences. It also sounds like there may be some misalignment in understanding the roles that everyone has. Uh, and it could be the person that signed you or that signed your friend or that's giving you this information um, has misaligned views. I've seen many a times where a person has right intentions and wants to sign an artist and they use paperwork that uh, expands beyond what their vision is uh, because they don't want to get screwed, right? Because they have to put so much money in and take so much risk. They don't want to get screwed. They know artists aren't loyal. You just mentioned Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion left her original company, right? And so they, they know these things. They want to protect themselves, but they also want to do music. And artists, they want to get on and they want to be in the best situation. They don't want to get screwed and they want to protect themselves. You have defense on both sides and everyone trying to figure out how do we win uh, and, and not knowing how to have that conversation. And so hopefully this gives you some clarity uh, maybe if you ask this question a little bit differently or, or you get to the root, I feel like there's another root here that we haven't addressed, but, uh, you know, maybe you send in that root question that that root concern, or maybe we could talk about it more definitely, but I've gone through all these different levels. I really think this video is going to be beneficial. Thank you for asking these particular questions because I think this video is going to be very insightful for a lot of people that watch it. Um, other than that, Callie, Duncan, L, I appreciate you for your question. If anyone else has a question, leave it in the comments below. Tell me how you felt about this question. Tell me if you agree with these points or these views, right? Let's, let's start a conversation about it. And as always, like, share, tell people about me. Follow me if you're not doing it already. The name's Sir Love. I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little, a little bit about a lot. Always trying to give you guys everything that I got right here on Phase 6. Take care, guys. I'm out.